Right, people, what's happening? My name is Joey. This is Joel, and you are tuned in to the best of London. We've we finally a picked a name. We've got a name. Listen, this name came up a couple of times in the comment sections, yeah. and I haven't been able to do my due diligence on who actually recommended it. So if it was you, make sure you put it in. I'll pin your comment, and thank you very, very much. Joel, what's happening, mate? Listen, I'm all right, man. I, honestly, I witnessed... The best game that I've seen all season. Who would have thought? Spurs versus Chelsea, right? Uh, we spoke about it a little bit on Vibe Five with Rio, and Rio were just like, oh, no, you know what? I reckon Spurs will do Chelsea because, you know, like, obviously they're flying at the moment. Me and Housen, me and Stephen Housen actually said, mm, actually, don't know, you know, when it comes to, to the bigger teams, I worry less about Chelsea. Yeah. I feel like you can pull out the bag. I saw what you did to us, you know, so mm -hmm. I thought, hmm. You know what? I think they're going to have a good go. Mm. Obviously, the game turns on its head because of the two red cards and you're practically playing against nine men throughout the whole game. But nevertheless, Chelsea come out 4-1 winners. Mm. What a game indeed. It's crazy, isn't it? Like, I couldn't have predicted the game would have gone the way it went. But I'll tell you one thing I did predict. I don't know whether I said this to you or not, but I did say that the reason why there was a higher potential that we do cause an upset, if you'd call it that, in this game, is because of Poster Coglu's tactics. And there's no doubt in now, the red cards, the injuries, they all played a part, but Poster Coglu's tactics mm -hmm. to not implement a more defensive style against Chelsea and to go for it with nine men, as he said, he'd go for it with five men, mm -hmm. those tactics inevitably, in my opinion, are to an extent what let Spurs down. So mm -hmm. I did, I do sort of feel like I looked into my crystal ball and got it a little bit, but no one could have guessed how that game would have gone. No. And I'll tell you one thing no one could have guessed. The man who pops up with a hat trick. He's been under fire from the public. And do you know what? Including myself, I've criticised him at times. But in this video, I really do, as a neutral, want to pick your brains on the enigma that is Nicholas Jackson. Are you having him or not? You know what? A couple of weeks ago, I sat here and I said, what great potential. And then as the weeks had gone... I thought, I changed my mind. Mm. We all do. We're allowed to do so as football fans, you know. I thought, mm, don't know about him anymore. Like, I really thought, mm, I don't know, man. That he's just the inability to convert when you really need it. Is, is that something you can learn or is that something that's natural? I mean, it's hard because Thierry Henry, I think, learned it. But yet you look at a Michael Owen and it was instinct. It was natural. You know, Haaland, yes, he practices a lot, but he knows where the goal is, mm. you know. Um... Mbappe, I feel like even though he's not as clinical in front of goal, it's still something he has in him, mm. you know. Nicholas Jackson, I'm really not sure, bro. Like, I'm really not sure. And up to the 75th minute, I had nothing but negative things to say about him. I just thought, got to get rid. You need another striker. At this point, you know, like, you, you need to go out there in the January transfer window, which you might still need to do, if I'm honest with you. Mm. But who would have thought that he would score a hat-trick in... Well, I was going to say 15 minutes, but if you have Very the added yeah. time on, it's yeah, like yeah. 20, 22, three minutes, really. But he had like 15 chances, bro. Mm. The, the, the reason I've used the word enigma here, could you ever, ever phantom a possibility, right, that a player could score a hat trick and me and you are sat here going, should he start next match? Crazy, isn't it? He, like, realistically, yeah, we're playing Man City stylistically, I'm not saying they're exactly the same, but they'd probably match up the most similar to Arsenal. When we played Arsenal, we played really well, didn't we, without mm. a recognised number nine on yeah. the pitch. And I'm looking at that City game and I'm going, do we go Cole Palmer, false nine, and maybe Conor Gallagher pushing up a little bit? But our recognised number nine has just got a hat-trick. Not someone coming off the bench, not someone who's in and out the team and they've been chucked in and given a go. Our recognised number nine has just scored a hat-trick and we're asking that question. And that's why... He divides opinion so much. I think on Nicholas Jackson, right, you look at his numbers and they're impressive. Like, I, I'm not having anyone tell me they're not impressive. Ten roll games, out the, roll out the nine stats. starts, five goals. That is more than Man United's entire front line combined. It's true. Yeah. And I know what you're doing here, <laughs> but you're skewing the stats a little bit. But go on. Right. Okay. So you're going on the eye test, yeah? And, and that's fair enough. And you're going on the fact, and I'm in agreement here, that when Nicholas Jackson goes for on goal, you aren't confident he's going to score. Nah. Now, you mentioned Thierry Henry there, and you mentioned that Thierry Henry maybe wasn't the most natural finisher early on. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing. 
Ball comes down the wing. Thierry Henry cuts in. Thierry Henry goes through on goal. No matter when this was, how early in his career was. Even in 98, when he was playing for Monaco or something like that, he was actually top goal scorer in the World Cup, in World Cup 98 for France. Yeah. Three goals, but... And you were confident he'd score? Yeah. Can you ever think of a player that did come good, that you weren't confident that they would score when they went through on goal? I'm trying to think, and the closest improvement I've ever seen in a player in front of goal, and I st I'm still not 100% to this day, but it's, it's Raheem Sterling. Mm. I feel like when he was at Liverpool, he had everything. And don't get me wrong, he would get the goals because he would always get the chances. He's paced the players around him, you know, the opportunities that they had with Sturridge, Suarez, it was like, it was incredible. But I thought, ah, I don't know if he can improve that side of his game. Mm. Goes to City. Bro, I don't care what anyone says. A lot of those titles are because of him, because Aguero is sitting, sitting out a lot of times. You know, it's, it's the truth. Raheem Sterling became the talisman linked with Real Madrid. You knew he was going to be in that pocket of space when you cut the ball back in. He's right there. But yet still, sometimes I still go, eh, I'm still not sure. Mm. For England, top goal scorer. Um, Euro 2020, yeah. right? Uh, well, which was played 2020. In yeah, played sorry, in 2020. 2021, 2020 yeah. played in 2021. Sorry, apologies. But again, like, I wonder, is he a natural goal scorer? He's had to learn, in my opinion, to, and he's good at it now. I still don't think he's, you know, he, he's like the finished article when it comes to scoring goals, but he will get you goals. Nicholas Jackson, I don't know if he can learn that, you know, like I can see what he's good at. He's good at when the ball comes in and he taps it like there's, the, you know, there's that style of goal that he's really good at. But I, I saw so too many opportunities that I thought you've got to be eating that, bro. Mm -hmm. At Chelsea Football Club, which is a big club, bro, like... Don't tell anyone that's on the channel. You know, that's <laughs> but at Chelsea Football Club, bro, all jokes aside, you've had your Diego Costas. You know, you've had Didier Drogba. Yes, people say, oh, Didier Drogba didn't score enough. But Didier Drogba didn't get 15 chances in a game. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that, you know. He was more about bringing others, others into play and whatnot. Bro, you need to be finishing them, man. Mm. If Cole Palmer's um, through, I'm backing him. Yeah. That penalty, I had a mate of mine, Rory Harper. Shout out to you, Rory Harper and Will Brophy. Uh, Rory was just like, nah, I don't know if he's scoring this. I'm like, you watch Cole Palmer. He's getting this yeah. in. Yes, he got a little bit lucky. But, bro, he's converting it. Mm. I think I look at Nicholas Jackson's performance the other night. And if you could take away the context we have, because ultimately we know there are show reels and montages upon montages of... Nicholas Jackson missing sitters. He does miss sitters. We all get it. I'll tell you one thing. Haaland miss sitters. Haaland does miss sitters every now and again. Darwin Nunes misses sitters all the time. Yeah. However, yeah. Haaland speaks for itself. Goal number's yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, Darwin much. Nunes, maybe not to that level, but I'll tell you what Darwin Nunes does. Darwin Nunes will sometimes create an opportunity or a chance for himself out of nothing. You see that goal against, I think it was Bournemouth in the cup, cuts inside, scores a screamer. Jackson doesn't really do that. So what Jackson does is he gets fed a lot of opportunities on a plate and he takes maybe 50% of them. If 50%, I don't even know. Maybe, yeah, maybe. Like. I'm, I'm probably blue Someone let us, know the, on there. let us know the stats, please. Well, I, I actually sat there and I counted it up. He had more than seven opportunities. He had seven opportunities that I believe as a Chelsea number nine you need to be scoring, yeah? He converted four of them. He doesn't know that the, the goal is going to be ruled out for offside, the one that he did get in the back of the net that was ruled out, yeah? So you can only judge him on what he did in the moment. What because, you know, we saw Darwin Nunes have a shocking miss the other day, and then it's like, oh, it was going to be offside anyway. No, you didn't know it was going to be offside, so you need to convert that. Jackson converted four out of the seven he was given, yeah? However, we, as a team collectively, probably ain't getting seven opportunities against Man City. And you, my friend, Nicholas Jackson, are not getting seven opportunities. So I think the eye test, even the way he rounded that goalkeeper, did you see he almost lost balance a little bit? I didn't. I thought from what I could see, and you probably saw the replays more than I did, but I thought he took that well. Mm. But I only saw that once, to be honest with mm. you, because I was in a pub. Right, I met up with my mates, like I said, and everyone was going mad. And obviously, when the goal went in, it was interesting to see what was going on. So I didn't see anything else. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, listen, I would agree that he took it well. Yeah. But there was a moment there when I thought, hold on, 
he's going to fall over backwards. It wasn't, you know... I wasn't confident. I, I was surprised was a step he took over it there or a bit of a shimmy, yeah. and it weren't CR7 really? style. Really? You know what I mean? And that's a player, actually, we mentioned. Yeah. He became a lot more clinical yeah, in front yeah, of goal. True. But Nicholas Jackson's 22 years old, right? There was there was a lot of anger that a few people had gone, he's a Drogba regen. He's not. He's not a Drogba regen, Completely right? Completely different. Different stylistically, but let alone the success you're going to have at a club. Different stylistically. The only, the, only, the only thing that's close to them is they're both black guys. Like, let's be honest yeah. with you. Like, but besides that, nothing. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's... The power Drogba, like, honestly. And that's another part of Jackson's game I'd like to see him improve on because, power. he's yeah, he's got the, he's got the size. Um, he's got the height. But I feel like he can get bullied off the ball a little bit. And he just looks a little bit clumsy, a little bit awkward at times. Yeah. However, stylistically, I can think of players that did look a little bit clumsy, a little bit awkward, mm. and they were effective. Now, when I look at J Nicholas Jackson, right, 22 years old, Drogba was 26 when he got brought into Chelsea. A lot of people would argue that Drogba didn't have the best first season. I think that that's a little bit of a narrative that someone's put out there once, and it's caught fire a little bit, because mm. I actually think Drogba's first season with Chelsea was pretty impressive. I, I don't know. <laughs> It wasn't until the second season that I knew he was the truth. Mm. First season, and it, which is all right. Sometimes people do need time to bed in. So maybe are we being a little bit harsh on Nicholas mm. Jackson? But it's that second season where the, I knew, I just thought, he's the real deal, mm. Drogba. Yeah. Like, yeah. You look at Drogba's first five seasons in senior football, right? Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind, to give it context, Jackson's on his third. This is... He's at the start of his third season in senior football. Mm -hmm. Drogba's first five. Zero goals in his first, seven in his second, zero in his third, five in his fourth, and three in his fifth. Really? Van Nistelrooy, great goal scorer. We'd agree no on that, wouldn't way. we? Van Nistelrooy, five goals combined in his first three seasons of senior football. Well, what team was that? It wasn't PSV, was it? It can't be, because PSV was Was he at was somewhere before PSV? I, we can check. The list goes on. Samuel Eto, he spent his first two seasons of senior football, obviously contracted to Real Madrid, but he was out on loan, wasn't he? In those two seasons, combined, he scored three goals, right? Aguero, five goals in his first three seasons in senior football. Shevchenko, he gets 17 runouts in his first season in senior football. 17 runouts, that's enough. Yeah, Ukrainian league, I get he was young, one goal. Yeah, but what are they doing in like, are they still playing like reserve team football at this point as well? No, senior. Yeah, but are they also still playing reserve team football? Because this is, this is look, I, I, I'm, I'm obviously trying to defend all those other players, but, and I don't have the reserve numbers, mm. but if you're getting like 17 runouts, but and you you've got one goal, but yet you're scoring hat tricks in the reserves, something tells me that you've got that potential. Mm. There's something there. Mm. Right about now, Nicholas Jackson is playing senior football at 22 years old, and I'm st I, I still don't know. I'm not saying you have to know by 22 because we've seen so many careers change. Mm. You know, um, I think even if you look at Frank Lampard, who would have thought that he would have been the monster mm. he became, even though he was all right at West Ham, but. You know, players, they develop. They really do. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think goal scoring is just one of those tough ones where it's very rare that you see someone that didn't have it as a goal scorer and then they go on to be a prolific goal scorer. It's mm. usually the other way around. But I do think you can develop it. And to use your club as a prime example, right? Mm. Do you remember Theo Walcott really wanted to be the number nine for quite a while? Yeah. There was like a couple of seasons yeah. in there, yeah. really wanted to be number nine. And he was vocal about it, which often you at that time you didn't hear that yeah, from players. Yeah. And we used to think, well, nah, like we've seen you on the wing and whatnot. And actually, for my money, when he was given the opportunity to play as a number nine, he actually impressed me in terms of his numbers right. that he was yeah, getting. Yeah. And I used to look at his game and I used to think, you've actually taught yourself to be a bit more clinical. And I completely yeah. agree with you that it's a natural instinct thing. But I do think that when we look at it, look, we're going to go on to, is he the right man for Chelsea? And do we still need a number nine? But can we agree ever so slightly, and we don't have to, but can we agree that there's a possibility he is harshly judged here? No. You don't think so? No, because I, I, I it's so weird as an Arsenal fan, isn't it? Mm. But... The, it's the same with Theo Walcott. Theo came from an era where Thierry Henry was the man. Mm. So everyone's upset when he gets number 14. The standards are so high at certain clubs that if you're not there, okay, to an extent, we judge those people harshly because Theo Walcott scored over 100 goals for Arsenal. Goals from Ars for Arsenal. So that's a big, that's a big stat. Yeah, yeah. But the reality is, Joey, it's like, 
there's a precedent, man. When you are at this football club, there's certain clubs. When you're a number seven at United, when you're, you know, when you're at United, people talk about United. They ain't won the league since Rio was there. Mm. But there's still an expectation, and I think that should remain. Mm. And I think Chelsea, Didier Drogba, um, Diego Costa, prior to that, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank, Tori Andre Flo, Good Johnson, mm. bro, standards, bro. Now, I'm not saying we should, we should be harsh on a kid. We shouldn't. But as part of Chelsea's recruitment, they need to be getting that right. That's one of those positions, probably the most important position, where you need to be getting it right. That spine is what your club has been built on since Roman took over. And sometimes even beforehand, to be fair. Do you know what I mean? So you got to be getting that one right. And I'm not saying we've always got it right, because we haven't. No. Or neither of United and stuff. And But if you look at... City, and you look at the clubs that are doing really well, there's certain positions that they've built their foundations on, and you got to hit the ground running. You obviously rate Pochettino really highly. Mm. I know you spoke very well of him, mm. and I'd imagine you very much rate his opinion. Pochettino has said, I've seen this boy in training, I'm paraphrasing here, but he mm. basically said, I've seen this boy in training, he can go on to be one of the very, very best in the world. I hope so. Is that a confidence builder? Mm. Or does he believe what he's saying there? Um, there's going to be a percentage of that that is confidence building. Mm. Joey, come on, man. Like, I think he plays him against City. Mm. I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm the guru of all knowledge. But I think he plays him. He does play him. Because what... Otherwise, you're in like a weird Arteta situation where you're saying certain things, mm. but then you're showing something else. Mm. And you have to back him. Mm. Because as it stands, even though I keep saying he had 15 chances, I don't know what the, 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 the real numbers are, but he scored a hat-trick, bro. Yeah, yeah. Whether, whether, whatever we say, he scored a hat-trick, mm. you know? And I think what you do, you, 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 you have to give the boy confidence because if you don't start him, you're actually probably going to rip the confidence that he's needed for at the, yeah. this season anyway. So you've got to start him. So Nkunku's probably going to be back by the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. Player. He comes back by the end of the month. We all know that the Christmas period is a sort of congested fixture schedule. Yeah. But realistically, if you look at the way that Reese was integrated back in, mm, yeah, mm. it was, well, he still hasn't got 90 minutes and he's now appeared in three matches. He's been fit a while and been able to sort of get to that point. I'm scared for him. Man. What, for Reese? Yeah, I thought, I thought you'd been playing him a little bit. Class when he's on the uh, pitch, he's man. Good, but he's just, but and do you know what I love scared. as well? Like, we're playing Cole Palmer out in that, out in that right wing position. And if ever there was two players that I'm like, Okay, you're on each other's wavelength. Sometimes a Palmer, yeah. yeah. Listen, people, people are giving me stick for for um, the way I see Palmer. Like, I just think the boy is I magic. Think class, I think he's bro. the next one, and he, I think he'll stay there for a long time. Him and Anthony Gordon for me. Mm. Don't be surprised if they get the the, the surprise call ups to England mm. for the Euros. Gordon was one, yeah. Uh, he was linked with us for fifty million last season, and I was like. No 50 way. million no for this way. Everton kid. No yeah. chance. And then he went to Newcastle. He had a little touchline bust up with Eddie Howe. Do you remember at Brentford he yeah, got bought yeah, off? Yeah. And I thought, yeah, man, the kid ain't got good him. attitude. Yeah. And now he's he's flying from. But just quickly, so even Kunku does come back here, yeah, end of this month. Let's say, for example, by the way, by the time that January transfer window opens, we've seen in Kunku have three, four, full 90 minutes. What do we do? Do we take the gamble and go, no, do you know what? We think between him and Jackson and Broha coming in and out here and there, they can provide us our goals. Or do we still go for a number nine? Yeah, I, 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 you got to go for a number nine. There's Poch has always liked a nine. Too much at stake, mm. you know. Um, again, maybe I haven't seen your team play enough, but I think the person to worry about when Nkuku comes back is Gallagher. Mm. Correct me if I'm right or wrong. Like, I, I think he's the person that might suffer a little bit. I think it'd be Jackson. Really? I think they'll play in Kunku at number nine. Really? Mm. Okay. I don't think Gallagher yeah. is ever getting dropped by Pochettino. Oh, okay. Poch loves him, man. Poch always has that player, then he? He has that go-to versatile player mm -hmm. that maybe surprises people at times. Like, mm -hmm. he had it at Southampton with Adam Lallana where he used to play in different positions. He had it, obviously, at Spurs with Christian Eriksen and a couple of others there. And mm -hmm. Gallagher just seems like the one for me. He mm -hmm. seems like the ever-present. And you know what? Very, very clear now. I know Reese has took back the armband. Mm -hmm. But if we can't rely on Reese to be fit, Gallagher's captain. We're agreed on that? He's got to be. Because the, the vice captain's Ben Chilwell. Yeah. Thiago Silva 
is that's, absolute that's, class. Yeah, absolute class. But can I upset yeah. you here? He doesn't act like a captain. What do you mean? He acts like a captain in his performances in terms of leading by example. What do you want him to do? Start gripping people up and stuff? I, do you know what? Yeah, I would have. I would have liked him to. I would have liked him to grab hold of Levi Colwell the other day and pull him off. Oh, that was a bit mad, isn't it? We should. That was still, a bit mad. Like, listen, it, you're you're really like delving into it with a fine tooth comb. But would you not have liked to see Silver or Sterling, one of those two over yeah, there? Not, yeah, uh, yeah, Gallagher yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah, Gallagher's yeah. the man that did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. We're in a match there where we have. A numbers of bombs. He, uh, he, right? I thought he crossed the line a little bit there. Who called well? Yeah, and I yeah. thought I wouldn't have been surprised if he had a, if he got a red. I mean, my mates were like, "Nah, like it's it's all right, it's a yellow." But I thought, "Oh, that was a bit strong." If that the one. match wasn't going the way it was in terms of being really fiery, and you mm. know, we were VAR mm. about take a bit of pressure off the ref, take the sting Bro. out of the situation. If it weren't going like that, yeah. both boys could have seen a red there. But I'll tell you what, though, I did like the hunger. Mm. So, for example, I'm one of those guys, a little bit old school. I know we don't have a lot of time left. This is a wicked show, isn't it, guys? Please smash that like button for <laughs> us and the comments. Get it in. But I thought to myself, like, I think Levi is now going to have a reputation where he shouldn't allow himself to get wound up. Mm. But I like it when people know, don't yeah. mess with that one. I love it. He, get, he, get, he can, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think when someone knows that, it, it just adds a little bit yeah. to something. I've never seen Didier Drogba get angry, but I just assume that you don't want to get on his wrong side. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's one of them. I don't know. Final thoughts on Jackson, right? <laughs> Can he continue to have this one in two goal scoring tally? Not in the long term. Mate, Poch is used to Messi, Mbappe, Neymar, Harry Kane, Son. Mm. Nah, mate, that's the short answer. But you use no. the tools you're given. And if, and, and if and, we and don't give him... And he's going to get more tools okay. at some point to go out and get a number, another number nine. Let's say, for example... Yeah, Ivan Tony might be an option. Let's say he gets Ivan Tony. Yeah. Does Ivan Tony's numbers, or do Ivan Tony's numbers, I should say, increase when he comes to Chelsea? 100%. With the service... at the moment, well, it's a one in two tally. Well, it's a one in two, but at the same time as well, you've got to remember, when you're playing with better players, Raheem Sterling is the perfect example of this. Mm. You just score goals. You know, like if you're in the right place at the right time, mm. Ivan Tony, he's got that confidence. He's not going to go there and go, oh, this player's one more than me. Oh, this player's like, he's going to go there like, yeah, I deserve to be here, mate. He doesn't mm. give a damn. You know, I would I would like him at Arsenal, man. I really would. Yeah. You know, I don't know about the price, you know, but hey, it's not my money, man. Well, listen, it's not my money either, but I need you lot to make sure you're cheering on Eddie and Ketia. Give Eddie and Ketia all your support because if that boy carries on banging goals, we're getting Ivan Tony. Oh. I, don't think, I don't think you're going for Ivan Tony oh. if Eddie and Ketia carries on scoring. What but was I cheering? Listen, this show, every week, we're going to try and get something out to you. We're going to talk Chelsea. We're going to talk Arsenal. We're going to talk all the London clubs and everything else, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it's just yeah. a chance for us to get together. So... Do us a massive favour. Hit the like if you're not already. Subscribe. If it was you that suggested the name, get in the comments. And also, the link to Joel's Instagram and obviously the link to the 5 YouTube channel is in the description for this video. Make sure you go over there. Follow them. We've got loads and loads of good content coming out and a very special guest coming out that myself and Joel interviewed very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. And we'll see you all in the next one.